definitely going to piss in them. <laughs> They're not going to be white for long. Nobody sit behind Harry. <laughs> if you think his bottle okay, his bottle's leaking or something, it's you, not his bottle. You are wrong. You are very wrong. <laughs> Welcome to Triathlon. Welcome back to another video guys. I'm back from Andorra in the pissing rain in the UK. Uh, we went to Andorra for two weeks training camp. It was snowing most of the time when we were out there. The UK had a heat wave and now I'm back in the UK. We've got rain. So yeah, can't win. <laughs> anyway, I had a really good two week training camp with Freddie and Leon. They absolutely ruined me and I'm spending the next few days sulking, crying and trying to recover before the next block of training. I would recommend Andorra as a training location to absolutely anyone. Um, you've just got to enjoy going up hills basically, but it is absolutely incredible. So I would definitely recommend it. Now over the next few days, I'm going, like I said, a little bit easier on training. So it gives me a little bit of time to do something that I've wanted to do for a while. Now, when it comes to triathlon, and being a professional, you want to optimize as many different areas as you possibly can with your equipment, as well as obviously getting the training in the recovery. All of these different sort of things that add up to different, you know, little percentages here or there, but combined, they make a big difference. Now, this, this is something I've wanted to do for a little bit of time. You will notice, or probably have noticed, that I've been using the Bont Zero Plus shoes for a couple of years now. And I've got to say thanks to Bont for sending me these shoes. Um, they've been absolutely amazing. They've fitted my feet really well because I've got quite wide feet. Um, and I've really, really enjoyed using them. However, for a bit of time, I have wanted to change them. There are two reasons for this. And that's what we're going to go into in this video. And we're going to see what my replacement is going to be. Um, the two reasons, first of all, are number one, I find it actually quite difficult to get my feet in these shoes. That makes me sound like a bit of a mong, um, but <laughs> it is fairly difficult. Now, for long distance, it's not really a problem because it's a little bit more relaxed coming out of transition. You obviously still want to make sure you're not losing time, but it's a little bit easier. In a 70.3, I have actually lost bike packs because I've been fanning about getting my feet in these shoes and I've lost, I've lost the wheel and whatever. And that's been quite frustrating, which is really annoying because I do really enjoy wearing these shoes. And once they're on, they're fantastic. But because you've got this Velcro flap and they're a bit fiddly and you've got the boa dial. And when you put your foot on here, it kind of all crumples down. Or if you put your foot on top of there, you've got to lift it up and lift that. And it's, it, it's, it makes, I make a bit of a meal of it. I'm sure there are guys that absolutely smash it and they'll be wondering what I'm talking about, but because I'm a little bit special, uh, I find it difficult. And because it doesn't have like a, a tab on the back, um, it's quite difficult to kind of hold it up. Um, you could obviously stitch something in the back if you wanted to, but you know, I'm just gonna butcher it even further if I do that. So that's the first reason why I want to change these shoes. The second reason is, Believe it or not, apparently they're not actually that aero. You look at this shoe and you think, wow, very aerodynamic. It's got this aero cover that goes over the boa um, and it's got these little kind of golf ball dimples in there. Um, my understanding is, now I don't know if this is true or not, but my understanding is these shoes aren't actually that quick. I heard this from Watch Shop when I did the aero testing with them in the velodrome. Um, and the reasoning behind that is because they are just quite a massive shoe. They're quite fat, they're quite wide. Um, and this aero flap, it does have a bit of a gap here. And supposedly that makes it less aerodynamic. So even though it looks aero, apparently it's not that aero. Now, don't take my word for this because I don't actually know if that's legit or not. This is just from what I've heard from numerous other people out there. If you've got more information about that, please do comment in the comment section below because I'd love to hear um, people's thoughts on this. But yeah, apparently they're not that quick. So one, once they're on, like I said, they're absolutely fantastic. But part of triathlon is getting your shoes on quickly. Um, and also I want to make sure I'm having shoes that are as quick as possible. So... Unfortunately, I'm having to say goodbye to these, but hopefully means I get a good upgrade, which is in this box right here. And I'm off to someone who is gonna help me get them fitted and get some custom insoles. That's the 
stud of the heel. So if we do that as a reference point, you can see where it's coming through on the toe. So we could always mark the toe, mark the heel. Yeah. You can see that's quite, it's through the logo at the front. If we do mark the heel on the toe, look at a different position. Yeah. So if I mark the, the same point on the toe, look how much further out from the heel it is. Mm. So you write his heel out, sorry, write his heel in. Yeah. By six mil. Yeah. This is heel out on the other one, huh. or neutral on the other one. Is that just incorrect setup on my part? Could be a loose bolt, like yeah. anything could happen. So you, you, all we do is we'll match left and right yeah. to be the same, and then we'll adjust it when you get on the bike if that changes your position or changes any cool. things. You said it was your left knee, you had a little bit of a niggle on the yeah. turbo. So maybe the right cleat is better than the left. Okay. So it's never making an assumption as to yeah. saying it's wrong. It's just trying to go, but one's different to the other. Okay. What is this machine and what's the benefit ah, of so, insoles? <laughs> yeah, so what we get with custom insoles, you're going to sit up here in a minute. You're going to stand first. We're going to take an impression of your foot. So this bag will be soft. We'll take an impression of your foot. The shape of that arch in neutral position. So make sure you have an arch that's the, your normal arch. Quite a lot of people there, the way the rotation of their femur will change the rotation of their tibia, and then that will change what you do with your foot. So you'll yeah. start to pronate or the opposite of supination. So we'll get you into a neutral arch position, support that arch in these bags, take a mold, heat the insoles up, put them on top and let them cool down in the shape of your foot. The reason we want people to have a neutral arch, because that's what everybody's born with. So over time we might move our foot or our leg differently, from a hip or a knee problem, or a hip causes a knee problem, and then the reaction is the foot has to change. So if a lot of people who run, if you've got tight hips, you might be collapsing through into your knee and then also rolling through into your hip, uh, rolling through into your foot. What happens on the bike, because it's not an impact sport, your arch naturally over time will fatigue and gradually get flatter and flatter. So some people you might find you're wearing your crank arm, like on the outside here, you wear your heel on here, so as you head around, yeah. you'll be rubbing back here or you'll be rubbing on the inside of the crank as it goes around to the front. So you might have a difference between left and right. One side might wear, one side might not. If you imagine if you're wearing on one side, your pelvis is gonna pull down to one side, so then you've got a shift in your pelvis. If you have both arches supported and everybody's got asymmetric arches, so one arch is different to the other, purely because of how we stand. We stand like this all day. Yeah. One arch is gonna be different. <laughs> So if both arches are supported and neutral from your pedals upwards, the pressure is gonna be even between them. You're gonna be able to feel that get feedback where the arch has like, got support and you'll be able to push and apply pressure to that. What we find is that anybody with a high arch, you might press to the outside of your foot because you've got no feedback under the inside of your, your arch or through your tiptoes and then that can cause tight hamstrings. So people will press where you get feedback. Um, if you did a deadlift and you could only feel pressure under your tiptoes, if you're lifting weights, you'd push pressure and apply force to your yeah. tiptoes. Whereas actually you apply force to the ground. The reason we don't tip our feet out when we lift a weight is because we're lifting usually a heavier weight. Whereas on the bike, it's a very you know minimal effort in terms of what we apply. If you think of 200 watts, for example, as a, as a, a, a number, um, is probably equivalent to maybe 35% of your body weight. Yeah. Or something like that. I don't know the exact equation, so don't quote me on that. But <laughs> it's not a direct correlation. If you did a big squat, you did a body weight squat, so your weight plus your body weight, um, all of a sudden you're putting a lot more force or pressure into the ground to move that weight. Does that make sense? Cool. Yeah, sweet as. So support your arches, stay pain free. Nice. Skin is pretty much the same colour as the <laughs> shoes. <laughs> How bad is that? Because he can colour match them. Yeah. Harry Palmer. <laughs> Hi, can I get a set of Harry Palmer with silver? Yeah. yeah. It matches your kit, actually. <laughs> yeah. Well, it does match the kit, yeah. Oh, oh God. <laughs> your left hand side yeah this is your right hand side set up for triathlon so what we look at is anything yellow is out of injury prevention zone so i okay. do this because you're pro triathlete yeah. aiming for performance so we know we're not going to hit all those in green yeah because we want to sacrifice a little bit of biomechanical efficiency for performance yeah and that's where the saddle is yeah. lower than the recommended height so okay the range of your knee should be between 33 and 42 yeah 
to keep you low risk of injury. Yeah. But we know you're optimizing performance. Yeah. And we find that with anybody trying to go fast on the bike, you can almost always have this saddle. Lower saddle. Yep. So that's where you end up pushing your heel through a little bit more on both sides. Okay. Because the saddles allow you to drive your ankles down yeah. into the pedal stroke. Um, but four degrees isn't much difference between the two. So your right quad might be doing more or your right hip flexor might light up a bit more. Yeah. Um, and you, if your hamstrings are tighter or your posterior chain, you've got a difference in tension. Yeah. So you can see you can get your shoulder lower on the left yeah. than you do on the right. Okay. And it closes that hip because your, okay. your back's lower and further down. So yeah. this position here is lower and further down by a, sm a smidge on the left. Okay. The, right. the cool. good thing is, as symmetries go between left and right, the difference is in the middle. Your one degree difference in your knee lateral movement, one, de one millimeter, sorry, difference between your knee over your foot. That's your knee marker versus toe marker. Like, don't worry about the back. If you look at knees, you've got four degrees difference between your knees. So it's an average of two. Okay. That takes you to 46, I'd say. Really, really sure. low risk. Yeah, okay. Um, so it's a good position to be in for, for performance. Yeah. And your hip angle still isn't fully closed. Okay. So you not saying you could go lower, because it's a lower isn't yeah. always faster. Yeah. You know, like you've stretched yourself out. Yeah, quite a that, lot. That then changes yeah. hip angle. Okay. But yeah, nice. and cadence is at 91. Very high. <laughs> Higher than normal, right? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Go and race. Great day to see Callum. I haven't seen him for a number of years. So first of all, really good to catch up. Secondly, really good to get my hands on these shoes. This is something I've been chatting with Callum for a little bit of time now. And I'm just really happy we got that sorted ahead of the next races. Um, and it means I can get going with these in training and make sure um, I'm getting used to them, essentially. But straight off the bat, you'll notice they're a little bit thinner than the Bonts. Um, but because there is this kind of like fly knit sort of you know mesh material i feel like they're quite giving on the on the width so that's really good um and you've obviously got yeah the little tab at the back which is going to be super helpful for getting the shoes on just the one velcro strap which supposedly what i've what i've heard is the faster shoes are either velcro or um elastic laces and um, I went for Velcro, but just because this is super easy, you can have the shoe wide open there, you get your foot straight in, straight over, and it's done. Whereas with this, you know, you've got to sort the flap out, get that out the way, the bow a dial, click that down, twist it. It's, it's just too many things, essentially, for me to think about, which <laughs> makes me sound like a bit of a simpleton, but I mean, that's true as well. And then I've got the really good insoles as well, like we went through with Callum, so man, like, these shoes are going to be absolutely epic. They look fantastic, and I cannot wait to, uh, yeah, to get going in these things. The, the other good thing, I guess, is that this shoe, it does look sort of like a cycling shoe as well. Um, so it means I can probably get away with wearing it out on the road when I'm training and not get called a chopper. Um, it still does obviously look like a triathlon shoe, but I think it looks kind of similar to a road shoe as well. So... Hopefully I won't get called out by the kind of chopper police um, for wearing these out on the road. But yeah, I mean, straight off the bat, they are very similar in weight. And I just think these are a little bit more slippery. Um, they're going to be a little bit faster. It probably doesn't amount to much, but mentally for me, it feels like I'm optimizing it a little bit more. Um, and the functionality of it, you know, getting my feet in quickly means hopefully, you know, I'll, you know, my swim's at a point now where I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm confident I've got a good swim and I'll get in a good position, but I want to be confident that my T1s are quick and I can get on the bike and actually use that position that I've got into rather than getting into T1, getting on the bike and then going backwards. It's like I may as well just not be a very good swimmer um, because I'm losing time there. So I want to maximize the amount of time or maximize my gains that I can have from having that good swim and setting myself up properly. And I think this is the shoe that hopefully that hopefully gets me there. I've seen a lot of people, um, you know, like Tom Bish, Ali Brownlee, people like that use this shoe. Um, and so, yeah, that's kind of why I've, I've looked into this shoe. Yeah, really looking forward to using this. Uh, thanks for watching the video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you've got any specific questions about things, drop them in the comment section below. I will be updating everyone on some more health updates that I'll be having from the sports doctor pretty soon. And hopefully some race updates once I figure out this kind of health stuff and um, what that road to uh, back to kind of racing looks like. So, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.